the stone globes of Costa Rica, imagine stumbling upon hundreds of massive, perfectly rounded stone spheres just chilling in the jungles and fields of Costa Rica. That's precisely what happened in the 1930s when workers clearing land for banana plantations uncovered these ancient marvels. These spheres, ranging from a few inches to over six feet in diameter and weighing up to 15 tons, were not made from easy-to-mold clay, but from hard granodiorite, an igneous rock quarried in the foothills of the Talamanca Mountains. The people of the ancient Diquis culture must have had incredible skill and determination to hammer natural boulders into perfect shapes, especially considering they had to haul these heavy rocks through dense jungles and over hills. Ancient craftsmen used temperature techniques, heating sections with hot coals, and then cooling them with water, making the stone easier to chip. They then hammered the rocks with harder materials and polished them with sand or leather, the same method used to create small stone axes and statues. This painstaking process resulted in over 300 perfectly rounded stone balls, still baffling archaeologists today. Despite extensive research, the exact purpose of these spheres remains one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Some suggest they pointed the way to the chief's house, while others believe they were used for tracking the moon or other astronomical events. There are also theories that they served as status symbols for wealthy families. However, the arrival of Spanish colonizers in the 16th century halted their production leaving us with more questions than answers. Greek fire. Imagine a weapon so terrifying that it could burn on water. This was the infamous Greek fire, a mysterious concoction created by the Byzantine Greeks in the 7th century CE. Unlike any other fire, this unstoppable blaze didn't just resist water, it thrived on it. Picture yourself on a ship trying to take down the Romans, only to be hit by a fire that gets angrier when you splash water on it. Terrifying, right? Emperor Romanos II of Constantinople valued Greek fire so much that he decreed it must never fall into foreign hands, preserving its formula as a state secret for centuries. Historians speculate it was a mix of pine resin, quicklime, and other unknown chemicals. Trying to guess the exact recipe is like attempting to decipher the ingredients of a secret sauce without ever tasting it. Damascus steel. Imagine wielding a sword so sharp it could slice a silk scarf in midair and bend without breaking. This is the legend of Damascus steel, crafted by Middle Eastern swordsmiths around 500 CE. These blades were the most sought after in medieval Europe, coveted for their extraordinary quality. Hard, flexible, and beautiful, with patterns that looked like flowing water. During the Crusades, European knights encountered these swords and were astounded. Islamic warriors wielded blades that made European steel look like Play-Doh. Experts believe the iron in Damascus steel came from Wutz, a type of Indian steel made over 2,000 years ago. This steel was traded through the city of Damascus, which became the hub for these magical blades. The technique to create Damascus steel was lost in the 1700s, along with its primary ingredient, Wootz. Some scientists theorized that blacksmiths might have mixed iron with certain plants to create the steel, but no one knows for sure. The Antikythera mechanism. Imagine discovering an ancient device so advanced that it feels like finding a smartphone in a pharaoh's tomb. That's exactly what happened in 1900, when a group of divers stumbled upon an underwater shipwreck near the Greek island of Antikythera. Amidst the usual treasures and statues, they found a crusty lump of bronze and wood that turned out to be the world's first analog computer, the Antikythera mechanism. This bronze mechanism displayed exceptional engineering and astronomical precision capable of showing the positions of the sun, moon, planets, and stars, as well as predicting solar eclipses and tracking the lunar phases. It even managed the ancient Greek calendar. Despite its advanced design, 
no one is quite sure who used the Antikythera mechanism, how it was made, or where it originated. The sophisticated craftsmanship suggests it came from a wealthy and knowledgeable background, yet the exact details remain a mystery. The device's discovery was like hitting the jackpot for historians and archaeologists, showing that the ancient Greeks were not just philosophers and athletes, but also incredible engineers. The Phaistos Disc in Crete Imagine stumbling upon an ancient artifact so enigmatic that it has puzzled experts for over a century. In 1908, Italian archaeologist Luigi Pernier discovered the Phaistos disc in the Minoan Palace in the city of Phaistos on the Greek island of Crete. This clay disc, measuring about 6.2 inches in diameter, is covered on both sides with 243 unique symbols arranged in a spiral pattern. Despite being created sometime between 1400 and 1850 BCE, its meaning and purpose remain a complete mystery. At first, some thought the Phaistos disc might be a hoax, but that didn't stop scientists and linguists from trying to crack its code. The symbols are so unique and intricately arranged that early theories suggested it might be an ancient form of a movable typewriter. However, Dr. Gareth Owens, a linguist and researcher at the Technological Educational Institute of Crete, and Professor John Coleman from Oxford University's Phonetics Department, have a different theory. They concluded that the disc might be a prayer to an ancient Minoan goddess. Today, the Phaistos disc is displayed at the Heraklion Archaeological Museum, drawing curious minds from all over the world. Despite being about 90% deciphered on one side, the other side remains a mystery. This 4,000-year-old enigma continues to baffle and intrigue scholars, keeping the quest for its full understanding alive. The rocks at Saksaiwaman. Imagine a fortress so precisely built that even after centuries of earthquakes, it still stands strong. Welcome to Saksaiwaman a massive fortress in Peru constructed by the Incas. The stones used in this fortress are gigantic, each weighing between 100 to 120 tons. And these aren't just any stones. They're polished and fit together tighter than your favorite jeans after Thanksgiving dinner. The big question is, how did the Incas manage to build this without any of the modern tools we have today? Some folks suggest theories like the Incas using a giant magnifying glass to heat the stones with the sun's rays. But come on, there's no way they had a magnifying glass that big in the 15th century. Others think natural fires did the trick. But you're not going to melt stone with a little campfire. Saksaiwaman was a military stronghold designed to protect the city of Cusco from invaders. The place is so well built that even after centuries and a lot of earthquakes, it's still standing strong. The walls are so perfectly put together that you can't even slide a piece of paper between the stones. When the Spaniards arrived in Peru, they saw Saksawaman as a free quarry for building materials. They started taking it apart, stone by stone, to build their own buildings in Cusco. It's a miracle there's anything left to see, but what remains is enough to blow your mind. The Voynich Manuscript Imagine a book so perplexing that it has baffled cryptologists, scientists, and scholars for centuries. Enter the Voynich Manuscript, a 15th century enigma with 240 pages divided into four sections, herbal, astrological, balneal, and pharmacological. But don't be fooled. If it's an encyclopedia, it's the weirdest one ever written. The manuscript is filled with strange drawings of unidentifiable plants, celestial charts of unknown origin, and naked women bathing in green liquid, sitting on giant ovaries, and holding rainbows. It's written in a completely unidentifiable language dubbed Voynichesi. Who on earth? or better yet, in the universe, created this thing. The Voynich Manuscript has a storied past. It disappeared for about 250 years before resurfacing in 1912, when Polish book dealer Wilfred Voynich purchased it. Since then, 
dozens of experts have tried and failed to crack the code. World-famous cryptologist William Friedman attempted to decipher it in the 1940s, concluding it was likely an early attempt at creating an artificial language. The Zheng Heng Seismograph Imagine a device from ancient times that could detect earthquakes hundreds of miles away. In 132 CE, Zheng Heng, a Chinese inventor, astronomer, engineer, scientist, scholar, and artist, presented his groundbreaking invention to the Han court, the seismic instrument, also known as the seismograph. This incredible device could determine the location and direction of an earthquake with remarkable accuracy. So, how does this ancient seismograph work? It uses a clever mechanism where a bronze ball drops through one of eight tubes shaped like dragons into the mouth of a toad sitting below. The specific tube the ball falls through indicates the direction of the earthquake. It's a simple yet genius design that was far ahead of its time. In 138 CE, Zheng Heng's seismograph successfully detected an earthquake in the west of Luoyang, proving its effectiveness. Fast forward to 2005, scientists from Zhengzhou, China, created a replica of the device. Astonishingly, it worked, detecting four quakes in China and Vietnam. But still, nothing beats the original, an invention so advanced that it remains unparalleled in its ingenuity. Stradivari Violins Imagine owning a violin so perfect that its sound quality has baffled scientists for centuries. That's the magic of the Stradivari violins, crafted by the Stradivari family in Italy from 1650 to 1750. These violins are renowned for their unparalleled sound, and despite countless studies and scientific analyses, no one has been able to replicate their incredible quality. The Stradivari family used special woods and a secret recipe for making violins, which they guarded closely. These violins are like the Ferraris of the music world, costing a fortune, millions of dollars for one of these masterpieces. Because of their extraordinary value, Stradivari violins have become prized investments. People buy them not just for their sound, but for their potential to appreciate in value over time. The mystique and rarity of these instruments make them highly sought after, to the point where some have been stolen and vanished off the face of the earth. The Pyramids of Giza The list of wonders wouldn't be complete without the Pyramids of Giza. These colossal structures have stood tall for thousands of years, and we're still scratching our heads over how the ancient Egyptians pulled off one of the most massive construction projects in human history. The Great Pyramid alone consists of about 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing anywhere from a couple of tons to the weight of a small house. And keep in mind, the ancient Egyptians didn't have cranes, trucks, or even wheelbarrows. So, how did they get all those stones from point A to point B? Scientists have come up with a plethora of theories. Some say they built ramps that went straight up while others think the ramps zigzagged back and forth. There's even talk about floating the stones down the Nile on boats. And let's not rule out the possibility of some ancient, long-lost mega-machinery. Wow, which of these ancient yet advanced technologies surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and share it with your friends. They'll probably love it too. And if you haven't already, Click that subscribe button and join us on the bright side of life.